Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Noah Galoot, and as you might be able to tell, I am currently in a kitchen, which means it's that one time of the year where they let me out of the studio and into this uh, kitchen-type environment to make foodstuffs for you people. And by you people, I mean you people. So today, I'm gonna make a grandma pie, uh, which is basically like a pizza pie that an old lady could make in her home kitchen. This is inspired by my good friend Frank Pinello, who uh, owns Best Pizza in Williamsburg. And basically, it's called the grandma pie because we can do it in these sheet pans, a little more lenient. You might even call it uh, rustic as f for example. All right, so to start these things off, instead of using flour, as you'd usually use to work a dough, we're gonna use olive oil. And uh, here's the thing, we're gonna pour a little olive oil right on the counter, just a little nice thin layer. Kind of spread it around, it's going to keep your dough from sticking. And basically what you're going to do is take your pizza dough. You can buy your pizza dough uh, from the store if you want. You can make it yourself if you want. Or what I recommend is better than buying it at the store, find a pizza place you like, go to them, ask them, can I buy a dough ball? And then they'll usually say yes, and you'll get a badass dough ball from a place you like. All right, so what we're going to do now is uh, work our pizza dough into the shape of our pans we're going to be putting them into. Uh, the main thing with pizza dough is bubbles are your friend. If you work your dough too hard, you smash it down, you blow all your bubbles out, and then you get a flat, crappy crust. You want to give it time. Um, so this dough has sat out for about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, basically until it starts to warm up a little bit because it has yeast in it and yeast is alive and you want to give it a chance to kind of open up and be a little easier to work. If your dough is cold as f then uh, it's really hard to work it. We're going to work with uh, confident, gentle hands. So we're going to sort of use no thumbs, just kind of using our fingers to kind of press this dough into a little bit of a shape we want to get it into. Start to work it in there. So now we're going to flip it back over. Now we've got a little oil on both sides. And just keep on working your dough. So now, let's take our dough and lay it right into our pan. And then we're gonna wrap this dough in plastic and let it proof for about, uh, depending on how cold your room is, somewhere between 45 minutes and an hour, you'll see when it starts to rise up a little more that it's uh, ready to go. All right, let's set this guy aside right here. And then, for good measure, let's do it again. All right, so today we're gonna make two different variations of pizza. Uh, one of them will be using our uh, pesto that we made in another episode, which you can watch by clicking right here. So I'm gonna do a very, very simple pizza for this first one. Basically, it's just mozzarella cheese and uh, a really kind of rustic, simple, chunky sauce that we made. Now let us know in the comments if you want advice or a video on how to make a basic red sauce. I'm um, gonna use about roughly three cups of uh, grated mozzarella cheese. Just kind of try to get some even distribution on your cheese. Then we got sauce. This is just canned tomatoes, sort of very, very roughly crushed by hand with uh, some garlic, some uh, dried oregano, and that's it, and salt. We do little kind of dollops of our sauce throughout. You don't want to go too aggressive. It's going to spread out as you go around. You end up with a really saucy pizza. I like a lot of sauce on my pie because I just like acidity. As you guys know, I am a whore for acid. Uh, also, cocaine and uh, money. Nonetheless, uh, I basically am saying I blow people for tomato sauce. I got to say, it's a pretty good exchange. I get to uh, put someone's penis in my mouth, and then I also get sauce twice. So this is gonna be a little more in the style of one of the pies we do at our pizza shop here in LA, Prime Pizza. All right, so for this pie, we're kind of starting it off pretty much the same way as the other one. I'm gonna use a little bit less mozzarella cheese, and we're gonna put dollops of ricotta, which I fluffed up with uh, olive oil, salt, and pepper, and the pesto, which we made in another episode. All right, once again, we're gonna start with our cheese, a little bit less this time, but uh, again, do whatever you gotta do. We'll take our sauce, and you just kind of wanna spread it around a little bit. Let's take a little bit of our ricotta. You don't want to get too heavy and like smush it in, but you want to get it on there. So you want to keep your dough nice and light. So we'll just do little dollops of, of ricotta, kind of spread out throughout the pizza. Now we're taking our homemade pesto, just like with the ricotta, putting little dollops sort of spread throughout. See how nice and rustic this looks and not very well organized? That's because I'm just being rustic for your benefit. All right, now we've got two pizzas ready to go into the oven. Uh, using these uh, nice cast iron sheet pans. You can use regular sheet pans, but you can get cast iron ones. It comes out way better. We have our ovens preheated to 500 degrees, nice and hot. We're gonna cook it for about uh, seven minutes, and then we're gonna rotate them, cook them another six minutes. Then for the last two minutes, we're gonna drop them down onto the floor of the oven, get a nice uh, coloration on the bottom of our crust. Uh, so one of the key tricks when you're making this pizza is uh, you wanna look at the bottom of your crust before you drop it down to that bottom shelf, or that bottom floor of your oven. 
If it looks like the crust is ready to go, don't move it to the bottom floor or it will burn. So be careful about that. So this one, I'm gonna put a little bit of fresh olive oil over the top to give it a little nice fragrance. And then take some freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano right over the top like this. And then let's grab some basil and just kind of super loose and rustic. Throw some basil leaves on this guy. So now, because these do have a lot of moisture on them and it's a thicker dough, what I want to do is let these pizzas rest for about uh, two, three minutes to kind of let the, all the juices settle into the dough and stop cooking. And then we'll cut into it. Otherwise, if you cut into it right away, you might get uh, juice and sauce running across your table. All right, now let's cut this thing into uh, some nice slices here. Now, a pizza cutter is really key. Otherwise, if you use a serrated knife, it would get all messy. Your sauce and cheese would get all glooped around and messed around. Pizza cutter is definitely the way to go. And just like that, we've got pizza. Now's the time when if you have friends, you eat it with them. And if you don't, you eat it alone in front of your TV. Hopefully not crying, but probably crying. Well, that's it for us today, guys. I'm Noah Galoon. I need to wrap this thing up because our uh, camera crew and uh, filming crew would like to eat this pizza now and get me to shut the hell up and turn the cameras off. So. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe to Tasted. I'll see you guys soon.